Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down how to react during a market downturn, a stock market crash, or a recession. It's true, the stock market as a whole is down, and that can be terrifying, especially for a new investor. But me, I'm not worried. And that's because I don't care about short-term performance. I only care about the long term. I've been investing for years, so I've seen the cycles. I've seen the markets go up, and I've watched the markets go down, and that's totally normal. I expect this. But if you're a new investor, you just started buying stocks a few months ago, it can be genuinely terrifying to log in and see red losses across the board. And sure, maybe you've seen my past videos where I emphasize the importance of long-term investing, but watching a guy on YouTube is very different from experiencing it yourself when your own money is on the line. So to really illustrate this point, I want to do something different. In this video, I'm going to compare the portfolio of a new investor who just started buying stocks a few months ago and compare that to my portfolio, someone who's been investing for almost 10 years. My girlfriend has generously and courageously agreed to be my test subject for this experiment. She opened up her first investing account, a TFSA account with Quest Trade, five months ago, back in January of 2022, and now she's facing her first market downturn. To make sure it's a fair comparison, I'll only be showing you my TFSA account with Quest Trade, so no RRSP or margin account. In both of our TFSA accounts, we have a diversified mix of purely Canadian stocks and ETFs. So the main difference between our portfolios is time invested. And let's see how much that time is worth. If you're wondering why I focus on Canadian stocks in my TFSA, make sure you watch my TFSA explained videos to learn my investing strategy to maximize the tax sheltered benefits of the TFSA. So without further ado, let's start with my girlfriend, the portfolio of a new beginner investor. So here you see my girlfriend's TFSA portfolio with Quest Trade. Right off the bat, you'll see that she has about $7,000 Canadian invested in her TFSA account. And that's a fantastic starting point. Definitely more than I had when I first got started with investing. When it comes to investing, there is no minimum amount required to start off with. Just invest what you can. But you want to start with paying off your high interest debt and then building up an emergency savings fund before you start investing. And only after those are done should you start investing with money left over. And I've already covered the importance of these steps in my video on how to build wealth in Canada. So back to my girlfriend's portfolio, she has total assets of about $7,000 in her TFSA. And she started investing five months ago back in January. At that point, the market was still doing very well and it was growing for the next two months. And so she earned some really nice capital gains in the short term. However, as you guys know, over the past several weeks, the market as a whole has dropped and that has effectively wiped out those short-term gains for those first two months. So now she's basically back where she started at. Looking at the top left, she has an open P&L or capital gains of about $123. That means if she were to sell all of her stocks in her TFSA at this moment, she would have made $123 in profits. That's not a lot, it's only about a 1.8% return on investment so far, but it is nice to see a positive number. For the past several weeks, we've actually seen a red negative number here, but over the past couple of days, the market as a whole has started to rally a little bit, which has bumped this back up to a small profit. For a new investor, logging in and seeing a red overall loss every single day can be scary, but my girlfriend knows that she is investing in the long term, all this money she has invested in the stock market is money she will not touch for years. So she knows to ignore those short-term losses. That being said, it is nice to log in today and finally see a green profit once again. I know it's difficult, but this is the hardest part of investing. You have to build the discipline to ignore the fluctuations, ignore the short-term volatility. The short-term does not matter. And I am so proud of my girlfriend. She's doing a wonderful job so far. She doesn't log in every day to check her portfolio, and that's because she invested in quality stocks, companies that are profitable and she knows have a long-term future. So she only logs in maybe once a week or when she receives dividends. In fact, you can see right here that she just received about $86 in dividends, and so she's gonna use this cash from dividends to buy some ETFs. So let's see exactly which quality stocks she chose. So we click on positions. And here you can see all of the stocks and ETFs that she holds in her TFSA. And right off the bat, you'll notice that some of these stocks are up and some of these stocks are down. And that is the beauty of diversification. Whether you're a beginner or a self-proclaimed expert on YouTube, 
Nobody knows what's going to happen to the markets in the short term. It depends on so many things. Seasonal effects, the price of oil, international conflicts, supply chain issues. Nobody can predict these things. So the best way to hedge your bets or protect yourself is to diversify. You never want to put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your money into one company or into one industry or into one country. Spread it out, diversify across all the different sectors. That way, at any given moment, you will have some losers, but you will have a lot more winners. And that's exactly what we see here. Some of my girlfriend's stocks are red, are in the loss, but some of them are in the green, in a profit. Even though we're in a market downturn right now, some industries are doing well, and a lot of industries are doing poor. But because my girlfriend is diversified, her winners overall outweigh the losers. And that's why her portfolio as a whole has a net positive profit. Remember, she has capital gains of $123 right now. One thing to note is that all the stocks that my girlfriend owns, I also own. So her portfolio is basically a smaller subset of my portfolio. And you'll recognize them. These are all stocks and ETFs that I've talked about many times on my channel. And they're diversified across different sectors. So we have the high quality blue chip stocks like TD, Toronto Dominion Bank in the financial sector. Then we have the telecom giant TELUS, as well as the energy and pipeline giant Enbridge. Now on the real estate side, we have various real estate investment trusts or REITs, which I have talked about on the channel, including Plaza REIT and Smart Center REIT. These REITs are focused on the retail sector. And for further diversification, we have ETFs, which are basically a basket of dozens of stocks bundled together into one fund. So these are some of my favorite Canadian ETFs. We have XIC for broad Canadian diversification, as well as XCI for more dividend focused diversification. So even though she just got started with only $7,000, she's already diversified across four different sectors, the financial sector, telecoms, energy, and the real estate sector. And on top of that, she's invested in Canadian ETFs, which means she has broad exposure of the entire Canadian market, so all sectors. So that's her portfolio as a whole. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the individual holdings. Starting at the top with TD, Toronto Dominion Bank. I've said this many times that TD is my all time favorite dividend growth stock. It's one of the most secure and reliable investments in the world. This company is older than Canada as a nation and it has not missed a dividend payment in 165 years. It's incredible. And even so, this stock is currently down. My girlfriend bought this stock at $100 per share back in January. She didn't buy it at the high point, but it was pretty close. We can see here back in January, the share price was around $100. And then for the next two months, it steadily increased up to around $110 throughout February. So she bought it for $100. A few weeks later, it's now worth $110. That's a profit of 10% in a matter of weeks. So as you can expect, my girlfriend was very excited. Then in March, things started to go downhill. That's when we had the invasion of Ukraine, record inflation levels, and rising interest rates in both Canada and the United States. And that caused overall panic in the market, especially in the financial sector. And so the share price of TD and most of the other banks dropped significantly and continue to do so. So my girlfriend bought her stocks at $100 a share, and now it's worth only about $94. So right now, she's sitting at a capital loss of $70 or about 6%. But remember, at one point, she was up 10%. So that's a 16% swing in a matter of months, and that can definitely be scary. But remember, this loss isn't real unless she gives into fear and sells these stocks, but she's not going to do that. She's going to ignore this short term performance and hold on to these stocks and let them recover because she believes in the long term future of this company. TD as a company has survived through everything. It's gone through World War I, World War II, the Great Depression, the market crash of the 80s, the housing crash of 2008, and the market crash of 2020. Every time it's endured, still made profits, and fully recovered and reached record heights every single time. Every time you've had one of these drops, when you're in the moment, it looks like the sky is falling and it looks like the stock is going to fall off a cliff. But if you zoom out, you can see that those massive drops are really just little dips because nothing has fundamentally changed with the company. It's still the same quality company. And because of that, these dips represent an opportunity to buy this quality stock at a discount. So that's TD. Her shares of TD are down about 6%. 
And this is pretty consistent across the entire financial sector. Looking at her REITs, the real estate investment trusts, both of those are also down. And that's because the real estate sector is also seeing a downturn right now, mainly due to the rising interest rates. As interest rates go up, it's harder for these companies to qualify for mortgages to buy more real estate properties. But these two REITs aren't doing too bad. We can see Plaza REIT is down almost 2% and Smart Tenors is down around 4%. So not the end of the world, they definitely will recover. But some sectors are either unaffected or they're doing well. Look at TELUS, which is a telecommunication company. Her TELUS stock is actually up about 7.5% since she bought it back in January. And that's because telecoms are very defensive stocks. No matter what is going on in the world, people need their internet and they need their phones. And so they always make very consistent and reliable profits. This gain helps to offset some of her losses. But the biggest winner she has right now is Enbridge, the energy company. The energy industry as a whole has actually been doing very well lately due to the rising price of oil and the increased demand of fuel of all types. And even though we're in the middle of a market downturn, Enbridge stock is at all time highs and her Enbridge stock is up over 14%. That's why it's so important to diversify. Some stocks will be down, but others will be up. Because of this massive 14% gain in just this one stock, her portfolio as a whole is up about $123. So that's what a well-diversified beginner's portfolio will look like. Someone who just started investing a few months ago before the market downturn. A lot of stocks are down, but some sectors are up. So overall, she's still in a really great position. But now let's compare this to my portfolio. Someone who owns all of these same stocks, but I've been investing for years and years. And now here is my TFSA portfolio with Quest Trade. I opened up my Quest Trade account about six years ago. Before that, I was investing with other brokers, mainly TD Direct Investing. Obviously, I've been investing for a lot longer than my girlfriend, so my portfolio is considerably larger. But what I really want to draw your attention to is the capital gains on the top left. Remember, my girlfriend has only been investing for five months. So she only has five months short-term performance. And in those five months, right now in the middle of a market downturn, she's only made about $123 in capital gains. But for me, on the other hand, even though my stocks are in the same market downturn as hers, since I've been investing for years and years, I have over $12,000 of capital gains. And that's long-term performance. That is the difference that time can make. I actually recorded this video five days ago. Now here is my portfolio the morning of the launch of this video. And you can see that now, since the market has started to rally the past few days, I have even more capital gains of $13,500. So in just five days, I've earned an additional $1,500 of profits. And again, that's why you have to ignore short-term performance because in the short term, in the matter of days or weeks, we can see some extreme fluctuations. This tells us that if I decide to sell all of my stocks in my TFSA at this moment, even though we're in the middle of a market downturn, a low point, I still would have made over $12,000 of profit because I bought these stocks years ago at a much lower price. And remember, this profit is just capital gains. On top of that, I'm also earning fantastic dividends in my TFSA. In fact, in my TFSA account alone, I'm earning about $4,500 every year in dividends. That's pure passive income. If you've seen my members only videos, you're definitely familiar with this Excel sheet. This is my drip tracker Excel sheet that I use to track all of my stocks, dividends, and drips, dividend reinvestments. And as always, I include a link in the box below to download a free Excel template so you can use it for yourself. So my TFSA portfolio is earning me $4,500 every year in dividends. That's purely on autopilot. On top of that, at this moment, my portfolio is sitting on about $12,000 of capital gains, but we are in the middle of a downturn. So even just two months ago, my capital gains were much higher. I had about $17,000 of capital gains. This isn't to brag or show off. I just want to illustrate the power of time in the market, investing in the long term. My girlfriend has a very strong portfolio, but she's only been investing for five months. 
You can't expect to make serious wealth in a matter of months. It takes years and years, and that's what you see here. Now let's look at my individual holdings in my TFSA. As you can imagine, I have a lot more stocks and ETFs than my girlfriend does because I've been investing for years. I'm not gonna go into detail on every single stock and ETF that I own. If you wanna see that detailed breakdown, check out my members only videos where I do a complete TFSA and RRSP portfolio reveal. For today, I just wanna highlight some of the stocks that we both own to compare and see the difference that time makes. Let's start at the top with TD. If you remember, my girlfriend bought her shares of TD about five months ago. And since then, the financial sector has taken a downturn. So with her TD stocks, she's looking at a loss of about 6%. But for me, TD was one of the very first stocks I ever bought. And I buy TD stock every single year. Today, my stocks are worth the exact same as my girlfriend's stocks, around $94. The past two months, my shares of TD have gone down. But since I bought them years ago at a much lower price, I'm still at a profit. Back then, I bought these shares for $50, $60. And sure, these past two months, the share price has dropped down by around $7. But over these years, my shares have gone up in value $20, $30. That's amazing capital gains. And those long-term gains far exceed this short-term loss. So if you're a new investor in TD, you're probably looking at around a 6% loss right now. But if you've been investing for years like I have, we're looking at a profit of 24% in capital gains only. For my position, that represents $2,400. On top of that, I'm also receiving dividends every single quarter. So with TD stock, it's very clear to see what kind of an impact time invested can make. But let's look at her other stocks. Here we have Enbridge. Remember, my girlfriend's Enbridge stock was actually up 14%, but I've been invested for longer, and so my Enbridge stock is up 23%. Next, Plaza REIT in the real estate sector. Her shares were down 2%, my shares are up 3%. What about TELUS? Her shares were doing very well. They were up 7.5%, but my shares are up 35%. Same stock, the only difference is time. Let's look at the ETFs, starting with XEI. My girlfriend's shares of XEI were doing great. They were up 5%. That's fantastic. My shares are up 67%. And XIC, which tracks the entire Canadian market. My girlfriend, in the short term, was down 2%. My shares of XIC, I'm up 20%. And because I'm so diversified, almost everything in my portfolio is up, even though the market as a whole is down right now. I only have two losers, and they're both in the real estate sector, and they're not even down by much. The rest of my stocks are up considerably, even in the double digits. Look at these. We have XEI up 67%, BMO up 48%, VDY up 45%, TELUS 35%. The secret is just time. I'm not a genius. I'm not outsmarting the market. I'm not timing the market. I'm just buying quality stocks and ETFs and holding on to them for the long term and watching them grow year after year. And I have no doubt that if my girlfriend continues to invest consistently and hold on to those quality stocks for the long term, she will see these incredible gains as well. It just takes time. I hope that seeing my portfolio compared to a new investor's portfolio helps illustrate the power of long-term investing and the importance of diversifying your portfolio. No one enjoys seeing their stocks lose value, but remember, your loss isn't actually real unless you panic and sell, and that's when you actually lose money. Instead, ignore the short-term performance, hold onto those stocks, and trust in the long-term future of those companies. That's how true wealth is built. If you're not sure how to actually buy stocks or ETFs, check out my Quest Rate tutorials, where I give a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to buy Canadian and US stocks using Quest Trade, my favorite online broker. And if you'd like to get started with Quest Trade, click my referral link in the box below, and you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. In this video, I showed you a quick glance at my TFSA portfolio, but if you'd like to see my entire TFSA and RRSP portfolio, hit that join button down below to gain access to my exclusive videos and see what stocks I'm buying every few weeks. This membership program will cost $5 a month, so if you'd like to help support my channel, I would really appreciate it. 
Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube. And hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.